is a program um, where they take kids from college campuses, they bring them to New York for six weeks or eight weeks, and they get them jobs at uh, different places when they come for Shabbos. And so we have every year, the last, this is our fourth year that we're doing it, where they come. There were 50 kids that came. Kids mostly did not grow up from at all. Like really, have no shy here. So I don't know how to read. So every year I tell them, I'll, I'll take the, the rebels. I'll take the troublemakers. Send me the tough guys. Send me the tough guys. So this year, Friday night, the guy tells me, oh, oh, oh boy, <laughs> we got you this year. I'm like, what? He says, we sent you a kid, okay? He's leaving Matzah Shabbos because he's joining another program, whatever. We can't wait for Matzah Shabbos to get rid of this kid. He's obnoxious. He's selfish. He's depressed. He's angry. He's miserable. And... And the, the, the rabbi comes over to me, he's a college campus rabbi full of chaim. These guys are superstars. You know, they're Makar of like a thousand people and this one kid. And he's like, I went over to him and I said, listen, you're leaving anyway Saturday night. Why don't you just enjoy yourself? These people are going to give you free food. Just smile. Just try to enjoy it. You know, it's just, it's your, you're leaving anyway, right? Why not enjoy it? He goes, and he, he, he tells me that's, what, that's the speech he gave him. He says, I didn't get anywhere. The guy just looked at me like, drop dead. So he sent them to me for Shabbos. Okay? <laughs> so, it was very nice. I'll, I'll just get to that. I, didn't, I hardly spent any time with him. I really didn't do, do much with him. But by Shal this after it was already uh, 20 hours after I met the kid, so I whispered to the rabbi, I said, what, what are you talking about? You sent me a tough kid? What are you talking about? So he looks at me and he goes, yeah, right. I said, watch this. It was a ches. So the rabbi was on one side. The kid was on the other side eating Shal this. I walked over to him. I said, Imagine, you, imagine you're a kid. And I walked to him. I said, hey, can I get a hug? The kid gets up. He gives me a hug. I'm looking over his shoulder at the rabbi. And I'm like, and he's like. So he sits down. I said, you know, I really need another one. He gets up. He gives me a second hug. The rabbi is plotting. He sits down. I did it a third time. I said, can I get one more hug? He gets up. Right? True story. Mamish Maisa Shahai. He gets up. He gives me a hug. I said, Tighter. You're talking about a 20, I don't know, how old are these kids? 22, something like that. Ugh, such a horrible kid, you know? I mean, it was a little bit difficult to me. I had a lot of layers to cut through. First of all, he was Persian. That's a different culture. Saradi. He doesn't like Ashkenazim at all. He hates Ashkenazi food. He hates Ashkenazi people. They gave me this whole list. My Shalashi this time. Three yummy hugs, separate. I let him sit down in between to show, to make a, a, a chatzitza between that you shouldn't think it was beritzifa like love or daif and akuma. I don't know how hugs work, right? The rabbi was going nuts. Listen, we can't be limited. We can't be limited. You know the story of the Shlaima Karlina. Shlaima Karlina was talking to... It was this week. It was Yurtzad this week. Thank you. I just remembered. And he's sitting with a guy that everyone in the town of Karlin, I guess, knew that he was the biggest palavera in the world. He was chashud of doing, they knew, everybody knew he was doing, I don't want to say it in a mixed crowd, in a mixed company, it's not so tzniistic, the averas that he was doing that are horrible and terrible. And Shlem and Karlin is in there talking to him and smiling, and he had the Kaidish, and he's going on and on, and it's brought down that his Talmud, the Uri Mistrelisk, was there. Reb Uri, the Saraf, I guess he was, he got that Name probably for a reason. He was probably pretty sharp. He couldn't take this, that the Rebbe is being so nice to this big balavera. And he was like getting nervous, or maybe he wanted to go, I don't know. Rabbi Shleim Kalin called in Rebbe Now, I don't know, from the story, you can't tell if he knew it, that he was thinking, or if he just saw that he's like calling the Shamrim, I don't know. But he calls him over and he tells him, go to the Vismedish and wait for me. He goes and he's thinking, me? Why did I get thrown out of here? What did I do wrong? I'm the good kid. I'm the Ben Chacham. He's going ahead and the Ben Rusha is over there and he's talking to this guy who everybody knows is a low life, a low life, a low life. Why do I have to lose out? So he goes to the Bismedrish and he waits. After about an hour, the messenger comes in. You can go back in. And Shlomo Kalin told him, <coughs> the mitzvah of Ahavas Yisrael is without a gvul. Your Ahavas Yisrael was limited. That you can't love him. And I wanted to teach you that you have to love everybody. That we have to take away the walls that are <coughs> limiting our Ahavas Yisrael, especially in the three weeks. 
There are walls that are limiting us. Not only we, we can't love the Freya, we can't love the Reform, we can't love the Conservative, we can't love the kids who went off the derech, we can't love our mother-in-laws. Uh, where did that come from? It just flies inside, I can't stop it, right? And, we can't, and then we can't love the other, I don't want to say names, of Hasid, the Solitvak, and it's like we're limiting ourselves, it's our mitzvah, our Chiyob of Ahavos is supposed to be for everybody. We have to be able to look in the mirror and realize that I have a problem. I have a problem. I can't love that guy because he's a different nusach than me, or he's a different problem than me. How does that t-shirt go? How does the t-shirt go? Don't judge me because I sin differently than you. Right? I'm very uncomfortable with your sins. My sins are a totally different category, right? My sins. I saw the Chazanish. There's a story of the Chazanish that a boy was stealing in yeshiva. So they wanted to throw him out of yeshiva. So he went to the Chazanish. And Chazanish asked the Rosh Hashiva, who was coming to him with a shayla. He says, you never talk Lashon Hara? What's the difference, this lav or that lav? It's the same lav. You never lie? What's the difference, this lav or that lav? And it says, Bavadai, and for sure he doesn't deserve kares over that. The Chazanish looked at removing a kid from a yeshiva's kares. And we are doing that. We are going ahead, we're saying, oh, this type of Jew and that type of Jew and this type of Jew and that. And it all comes from the fact that we're not sticking to what we know. If we really internalized that not only you can't judge somebody until you reach their place, but have it done as kal ha'adam like ha'schus, which means I will judge and I will make sure that in my judge, in my court, in my court, you come out favorably, right? That's our chiyuv. Until we commit to that, we're never getting out of here. And I, I think that that's part of the lesson of what's happening, to be able to look at someone and say, I can't judge you because I don't know your pain, but I believe in you. Don't judge someone until you know their pain, until you walked a mile in their shoes. And actually, the Gilam Kaime that the Swasama says, you will never reach somebody else's makam. We need to be able to look at these kids, to look at everybody, and to be able to say, I love you and I believe in you. And it's hard to do because they're so dysfunctional and they're sinning. But as much as they have their challenges, this is our challenge. And especially in these days, we got to step up to the plate. Thank you.